But there's some inlays. Uh, probably if you've been around me at all, you know I really enjoy inlays. One of the things that I dislike about inlays is normally people go a little black, white, red. You know, I mean, something that reaches out and slaps you in the face. I don't think that's always necessary. Sometimes uh, the blend of them really comes out much nicer. And hopefully I can show you a little of that tonight. Um, I do a lot of inlays. And I'll pass a few things around. I don't re keep them strictly to uh, bottles or anything. I got some pens here that will also go around. If you notice the one, all the inlays are kept in brass. Yes, that's a, a little something to try. Uh, I've come across a, a few of the things that I really like. Um, in the last month, I've probably done 30 of these between my wife and my daughter. Uh, every time I turn around, there's a new bunch of bottles, not always the same size or anything that's sitting on my bench. And uh, I guess they're kind of like do things for the wife and the daughter. So. And then the daughter gives them away to some of her friends, so I end up doing a bunch of them. Uh, this particular one, uh, my wife is taking some to England, so I even had to take and make a bunch for her to take to the people that are hosting her. So. <clears throat> Now I have something that's very, very important, especially for Don Johnston. <laughs> now I'm not messing with the little mics. This is a, a two-incher and a three-incher. Uh, that's what I need to make the particular lids there. And if you're really interested, yes, I have larger ones. <laughs> Those from Harbor Freight? No. <laughs> In fact, some of those have been around since 1960. That's when I started serving my apprenticeship as a tool and die maker. Um, when you go to start making inlays, The main thing is you might want to start to decide how to take and do your um, your design. And I think your design matters a lot. This one is very simple. It's just two double inlays. Then you get into something like this and you got a triple inlay. But getting the proportions right, uh, or that at least they look good to your eye, to me that's number one. Then when you really want to try something, that the center was cut out, trued up, put a piece of ebony in it, reset up the center, true that up, and then put it back together. Now this one missed a little bit because I did it on the lathe and these old eyes are getting tired. I should have taken and put it down to where I could look straight down on it. Um, to cut that apart and put it back together and have that amount of um, wood taken away, I think is pretty good. In other words, I had to take and use a 
a special tool of mine. This parting tool is, I think, 38 thousandths thick. Under the light, the tool. Now, you just don't go out and buy those unless you buy the hacksaw blade, which is what the tool actually is. Teeth removed, cleaned up, resharpened, put in a handle, and it does a nice job. The inlay is actually less than a sixteenth of an inch thick. I'll go pass the rest of these around so you can see them all. So you better count them first, Dick. It's okay. I got beepers on. Them. Find my lid. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. When I go to start doing my inlays, uh, the first thing you want to do is take an inlay a lid into your piece of wood. Once you've got that started, then you want to kind of develop what you're going to do for an inlay. Now, one of the things that is kind of a pitfall for people, when you're doing anything on the lathe, if you take a sixteenth off, you've actually taken an eighth. You have to figure a sixteenth on a side. So when you are figuring for a thickness or a width on one of your inlays, just remember that. You know, if you want a 16th, you don't make it a 16th. You make it a 32nd. Okay, what I like to do is I'll take my woods that I want to use and I take a circle template. And I'll go over and pick out what I want so that the wood is kind of kind of put out in the front where you get all the figure that you want in it or all you hope you can get in it. And then I cut them out with a bandsaw. Once I have them cut out, I go to my disc sander and I bump the back of them. And the reason I do that is so that it's nice and flat, I can put it up against a piece and turn it. But there's two things about doing that. Number one, when you do that, you want that down and when it does, it makes the sides parallel. If this is out of whack and you put it in your inlay, it's going to set it at an angle and you're going to have gaps around your inlay. So by doing it this way, your inlays are straight. Okay, I just put a piece of uh, scrap wood in, in the lathe or a chuck. And normally I used to just take and put a piece of double face tape on here. With the larger ones, I start getting a little problem because they're, they're a little harder to pull. So sometimes you knock them off. And if you're doing a bunch of them, you know, then you're putting new tape on all the time. The small ones, I don't have a problem. When I'm talking small, I'm talking maybe three quarters of an inch. Uh, I think my record for double face tape on the small ones like that is 29. If you put your tailstock up there, nine times out of ten you're going to have a, a pole in the middle of it. I like to take and use the centers for a smaller inlay. If you put a just a, a flat uh, point in your uh, life center, it has a tendency to want to kind of skate around on you. So I made my own. This happens to be a bearing off of a router bit. And it works like a charm.
it allows me to that I can position this a little bit, just back it up or whatever, and I end up with a eh, pretty close right now. If I'm doing small ones especially, I'm sure some of you have seen my inlays that are multiple ones offset. Uh, I will use the scrap block as kind of a guide. Some of my inlays will have like maybe four of the same size in it. I would take and go right up against and actually cut into my scrap block. And once I have it sized, my scrap block is the same size, so my next one, when I put it up there, is just like a pin uh, bushing. You take a look at it, bam, 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 you're right there. So you can move right along. Now, one of the things I found out, if you are trying to make this nice and parallel, you don't want to take and pull this along. What I like to do is I'll start it and then just push it. And it really works quite nice. Pulling it, you have a tendency to pull it off angle. By pushing it, once the bevel catches and if you keep the bevel down on it, get a nice cut. Can you scrape it? Yeah, but I'll, I'll defy scraping to get what I just did here. And why do you want to do that? If you scrape it, you end up with the end grain normally, uh, how would I say, not rough, but it's open. And when you glue it in, the glue has a tendency to go back up into that grain and it makes a dark area that almost looks like you have a gap. Now, why do I use a mic? That's right. Okay, when, if I'm using a micrometer on here right now, I'll check my diameter, but between the thimble and the anvil, if I tighten it up there, I can look at it, and if it's laying flat, it's parallel. If it's on an angle, you're gonna see it right now. And you want your inlays to be as straight as you can possibly get them. Everybody with me on that? Besides, if you have plans and you've drawn them out, you do want to lay the mic on it. Don taught me that. <clears throat> Only when we're together. <laughs> tape on her yesterday so now I've got a my inlay is ready and I'll I would go ahead and make all my inlays that I need right now any questions up to what I've done so far I'm sure everybody would like to see this uh, what I did, I took a piece of aluminum and I actually turned on the lathe by hand to make my piece and also to go inside the proper size. I made a stub that holds the bushing 
and I didn't make it all the way. I left a little bit of a shoulder to stop this bearing from going all the way so it doesn't bottom out on the, on the piece itself so it stays free. I think I'm going to patent that next week. <laughs> so you sell those? Pardon? You sell those? I haven't. That's the only one I've ever made. So. That makes it pretty valuable. By the way, just so we're clear, I do want it back. <laughs> really? second I have to change the jaws. Yes, it is. How is it held up for you? Fine. I had my my doubts about it when I first got it, and uh, if, as you can tell, I like precision. And like on my Vic marks or all of them, your jaws are numbered. These aren't, and they go anywhere. So I, when I make my uh, my jakes, whatever, I always put them in the chuck, and I mark it so that it goes back in the same jaws every time, and that way it always can stays consistent for me. Well, this one doesn't do that. But I did put an indicator on it and ran within 5,000, so I changed the jaws a couple times and it always stayed pretty much the same, so we're working with a piece of wood. Got a piece of walnut here. And you know what I didn't do? I didn't bring a lid, or a jar, so I don't have a lid. But I'm going to take and go ahead anyway. I know where I'm at pretty much. And uh, if I get home and it doesn't fit, I can open it up. <clears throat> when I go to bore this, I use my tool that, well, I designed this thing to do inlays. As you can see here, this is cut at an angle. And I don't know if you can see it in the picture, but this is a piece of the original tool. I haven't ground that yet. Okay, when that goes in, that little piece that is the original tool acts as a guide and uh, works like a charm. Now, why did I back this off? If I went in there with the square side, chances are I'm going to hit the bottom on that round circle. If I go this way, I've already got that clearance for that circle. Do you sell those? Beg your pardon? You sell them? Uh, I have sold a lot of those, but I haven't lately. Uh, <clears throat> these are 
these are the same tool as what I have, only smaller versions. The one I'm using right now is a half inch. <clears throat> Is that something you could just buy at McCaster Car and grind them? No, that's a uh, Sorby. A Sorby. Yeah, this one here is actually a Sorby. Uh, the quarter inch one, that was a Henry Taylor, and the small one was a Henry Taylor reground for making it a 3 sixteenths on a surface grinder. If you're doing a lot of them, which I, I said this before I left home, so now I know basically where I'm at for my lid. Uh, you can mark it so you have an idea of where you're at. Now the thing of it is, you don't want to take and let that far side hit it, or it just snaps it right up. We've established what the diameter of the recess is. Now, when I start doing the edge of it, I want that to be parallel. So what I'm doing is looking down at the bed of the weight, uh, lathe here. Okay, I know from, I've done enough of them in the last month, what my dimensions are. Okay, I'd like to take and make sure that my bottom is, is flat, which it is. And what I do, I go to Home Depot, one of those places, and go to the Formica, and they have these little things laid out, different colors, patterns, and, uh, you know, I'd say, you know, that one, my wife might like that. I kind of like this. You know, maybe my daughter might like that. And pretty soon I got a stack of them. I used to be welcome at Home Depot. <laughs> uh, I take them on my sander and I square them up. So all I have to do is go in there and, you know, what, what better way, you know, I have some that are narrower, whatever. And uh, I just make a great little way of checking to see if it's flat. Okay, I still need to go just a little deeper. At this point, I would make sure that my jar lid went in there. Dick, I noticed your your handle is is on a downward slope. Right. Is that? Uh, um, it's kind of like working uh, almost a negative. If I went in there the opposite way, it would be become very very aggressive. Also, 
when I hollowed this out. Now, if I go to do this edge, if you really take a look, I'm quite a bit above center line, right? Okay, all I'm hitting is that very, very corner. Everything else is clear because it sweeps away from me. Actually, it goes both ways. So that's one of the things that I, I like to do is make sure that I'm square and I don't get too aggressive in there. As you can see, it's aggressive enough. You know, it cleans everything out in a hurry. So are you looking for... Oh, that lid, excuse me, but that lid just went in there perfect. <laughs> it, it, it did. So, so I was just like checking, are you looking for like assertive as opposed to aggressive? No, I'm looking for something that I can handle that really works decent. I don't care if it had to be the other way. I don't think there's any one time that you can make a tool do everything that you want it to do in one position. It just doesn't work. Uh, I don't care what you do. Uh, how many times can you use a, 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 a 3 8 spindle gouge? You can, you can shear scrape with the side. You can shear scrape with the point. You can do all kinds of stuff. You know, but I mean, most people think that there's only one way to use the tool. No, no, there's not. You use the tool to fit your situation and to do, make it do what you want it to do. If you can do that, you've achieved something. Is there any burr on that tool no. or do you, do you hone it off? No, I don't own it off, but it doesn't last us very long at all. So you're pretty fine CBN wheel? Yes. How fine? Well, uh, that one is uh, 200, I believe it is. I have a, my, my gouges, I do a 320. Now, what I like to do is finish off the very bottom here. Now, if I was home, the first thing I would do is put some sealer in here. Deft, whatever. Normally, I just take and give it a coat of deft. Just to seal it up. How deep should you go with this? There's a, a judgment call. I'm sure the one that's going around here, I'm probably an eighth of an inch past the bottom of the cap, maybe a little more. But when you put the cap on the jar, it does make a, the meat makes a nice transition between the wood to the piece. If you go too shallow, you get a, a big gap of uh, where the threads would be. And I, I don't care for that. So again, it all depends on your likes and dislikes. Did you shorten the handle uh, that came with the Easy Wood tool, or that looks different? Uh, and it that, look, that's shorter. one of my original Vicmark handles. Okay. Um, I could never understand why people will stand here and try and put that in when you can just take that. In. Now, is this perfect? No, it's not. Put something big on here and you interfere with that. So that's why I carry a long one also. But my key of choice is the short one. Answer your question. Well, of course, the next question is who designed those jobs? I did.
Okay, I took and uh, made my my inlays before. I didn't think you wanted to stand here and watch me do all my inlays. We're gonna the first one that's going in there is going to be a piece of holly. Now that is two inches, three hundred thousandths, and for people who use a yardstick, that's roughly two and five sixteenths of an inch. I use decimals on count of, I use the micrometers. Once I put that in, I'm going to put another one in there, two and one seventy-five, which would be three thirty seconds, a little better, two and two and three thirty seconds. And the last one's going to be two inches. Okay, I want to make sure that I don't go through. Okay, I've got about a quarter of an inch. That's more than I like to leave in here. Okay, we got about an eighth, maybe just a little bit less. Now we're going to start fitting that inlay in. Now, I want these to be nice and straight. So again, I'm looking at the, <coughs> the ways. Once I start the tool, I keep a very light pressure against that, that piece on the top. You don't want a lot of pressure, but if you have just enough to hold it against that, you just, all you gotta do is push the tool forward and it just follows. I inevitably get people ask me why don't I drill that. I can cut the hole cleaner more accurately than I can drill it and I'm limited to drill sizes. I'm limited to nothing with this. The first one is normally the most difficult because you don't really know where you're at. Okay, she's just starting. Yep, I, yep. if I put it in there, it's not coming out. Here. 
I don't know if you folks ever have a problem with knocking your glue off the end of the lathe. I've made a little thing to take and hold my two bottles of glue and the <coughs> accelerator. Plus, on the bottom, there's magnets. The holders were McCormick seasoning jars, the little ones. Put them in the chuck, cut the tops off. I think it was an inch and three quarter, four a bit. Put them down in there, and there you are. It works good for me, so. Using the medium glue. I don't like this handle for, I'm used to a bigger one. There are times when you go to put that in and it just doesn't quite want to seat. The end of that is square, so it lines everything up there for you and to go in there and reset that. Yes, if you hit it too hard, you stand a chance of breaking things. Okay, there's a reason that I went and did that. Sometimes you get glue, which this one has, and it would be glued to the bottom. So I like to go immediately and cut that out because chances of that glue being dry are slim than none and slim left town last week. So you can take and, and save that and use it some other time. I'll save those for your mason jars, Dave. I'm saving the centers for your mason jars. Now what I like to do is make sure that that glue doesn't come out of there. Okay, what I'm putting in now is a piece of Pernambuco. Dick, can you put the, uh, the glue in there to start with? Do you not worry about any of the glue seeping into the wood at all? It does. It doesn't discolor, you're not a problem. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, there was one that went around that had. Um, butternut and spalded maple and if you looked at that the glue goes in especially on the end grain uh, how do you fix that I don't know I, I, I mean that that's a nature to beast that the glue goes back up the easiest places it can go could you seal it before you put it in there why did you know did you notice that on that? Well, I was told. Yeah, but you didn't notice it before. <laughs> so why? <laughs> no, I'm not, not putting you in a trick bag, but I mean, the, the main thing is probably nobody really paid attention to that, but I'll bet you if it came around a second time, you would. But would it, if you did seal it, would it correct that? Uh, I don't see why I would go through the trouble of it. Uh, like I said, it's 
you just don't see it. You know, you see a dark area. Now, if one of these is off, is too small, you'll see the glue heavier on one side than another, and that's called a fox pots. Shouldn't have had it loose in the first place. Does it happen? Occasionally. But yes, uh, you're right in what you're saying there, and I don't know how to get around it. Um, the only thing I, I know is that if I can put them in like the last one, it's pretty hard to, hard to do anything there. So. Now, if you have enough to play with, and you're, you're guessing how close are, am I? Now I can go ahead and I know where I'm at. She's right there. One of the things I don't want to do is go here and drive it in. The white one is only a sixteenth of an inch thick. So you stand a chance of cracking that. Okay. This one's just a tad, tad light. When the glue's all in there, it's sitting solid. That's my normal way is to catch them on the way out. <laughs> now, the reason I took my time, I didn't want to go through the walnut on it. So I was watching to see if there was a change in the color of the shavings. Now I'm going to put a piece of figured walnut in here. And I see no no problem with trying it a few times. To me, it's much easier to take a little off than trying to put some back on.
Now this one I'll take and put some glue in the bottom also because this one won't be cut out. That one is right there. One of the problems that I have now, sometimes that glue doesn't set inside and it wants to throw it out. So you have to kind of be careful of that. And I have put some, in, well, right there is some glue that came out through the grain. There's just a little glue there. I like to try and make sure that that doesn't happen because it really bothers my glasses. Yes, Paul? When you put that centerpiece in there, did you pay particular attention to the grain orientation? Normally not. Relative to the outside ring or anything? Normally not. Sometimes I do. Yeah. Uh, it, it just depends. And like we got a piece of just plain walnut on the outside. This is setting pretty close to. Uh... Okay, now I ran into a situation here. Evidently, I didn't go in straight because I've got a little gap. So that tells me that when I went in boring that, that I actually went off angle a little bit and it left a gap. Now there's two ways of fixing that. You can fill it with glue or you can cut it out and put a new one in. Which I'm not going to worry about gluing it up right now. Scraper. I like to put a little bit of contour on it. You know, if it's perfectly square, it doesn't feel good in your hand. At this point, I would take my sanding on the drill and sand that and then finish her up and you've got yourself a... Other than the fact that I don't like the sharp edge here, just break that corner a little bit so nobody gets cut on it. Okay, I'm not happy with the center inlay. Now when I when I went in and put it in there the top evidently was was the right size but I evidently went in at a little angle 
which made a little bit of a gap because when I put it in there was no play in the, in the piece at all. So you're, so you're saying the inlay had a little bit of a taper to it? No, the, in, the inside of the one I was cutting, I didn't line it up evidently square. Yeah, do, you, do, you ever, do you ever check that before, you know, with a pair of calculators or something, see that those walls are parallel? And if you did, how would you do it? No, normally they, they go pretty good, David. I just don't normally have that problem. Now when I get home, I'll probably knock that out and put another one in. Because I don't, I don't like it. Yes? Could you put a third thin ring there if you wanted to? You mean, and uh, that would, that would mean, mean making a ring yes. and fitting it in. That, that's pretty tough. <laughs> I've, I've done it. So I was just wondering if you wanted to. Not on this. I, it was on a multiple inlay that I did that. Uh, in other words, I've made a ring that went in and went across all the other ones. And people look at it and say, well, you couldn't have done that. But I did it. Anybody got any questions? I know you say it's not the way to do it, but could it? To, to try it, would it make any sense to experiment with it with four screw bits? Wouldn't you have to knock out, like, the most of the four bits that I've seen yeah. have, yeah. like, got a point? Yeah. So you'd leave, like, a divot in the bottom? Yeah, that, that's one of the things it would do, which on a lid it probably wouldn't matter, but uh, the thing that it is, you've got four screw bits either in a sixteenth or an eighth. Uh, divisions. Okay, I'm not even close to any of those other than the last one, which was two inches. So you know you're limited to what you're what you're going to do, and I don't think that you could you could drill. I know I can't drill a, the edge of the hole as clean as I can bore it with that. If the size was an issue, I'm thinking about it. Well, the size and the, the quality of the cut. Would be sloppy. Forstner bits do not cut real clean as far as I'm concerned. You know, what, what I bored in here was, well, you would say it was pretty clean. You were looking close there. Yeah, I, I agree with Dick. Everything he's saying is it's, once you get used to that, that tool, it's a, it's a blessing. Yes. It really goes pretty fast. And it's not that hard to line it up. If you just take your time, be patient with it, you'll learn it. Let's make sure you have the tool rest in the proper place. And a handle in the proper place, which I didn't on the last one. Hey, Dick, do you thread those or did you just use the metal Do what? Do you thread the inside that cover or what do you do? I'm not understanding. What I do for the cap, I take silicone adhesive and glue it down with silicone adhesive. Now the only ones I don't like to do is plastic ones, because there's nothing wants to stick with plastic too much. Uh, my daughter had one that she, Dad, you got to do it. You know, I like the jar. You got to do it. So when I when I to fit the cap on, it was tight to begin with. And then I took and s s scraped the inside with a few rings, which were opposing to the ridges on the cap. And then when I put my glue in there, I'm sure those you know, kind of crossweight and didn't have a problem with it. But uh, even super glue will not stick to most plastics. I shouldn't say most of them, but. Uh, Certain type of plastic. Yes, sir. How do you cut? How do you cut the inlay rings on those pens? You get this tiny cylinder. How do you do that? The brass rings. The brass insert with the wood. How did you do the inlays on the pens? On the pen. Yes. Well, I took the the brass and I turned the plug that went in it. And then I turned before I put the tube in. I took and. I had turned the pen blank into a cylinder 
with the hole through it, laid it out, did all of it in a V block, drilled through, put my brass in, glued it, redrilled the other way, put my brass tube in, and then went and turned the outside carefully. Because wow. <laughs> there's, there's not much there's not much between you know the, the tube and that. So. Dick, you ever done any uh, sand shading on your inlays? Any which? Sand shading? No. No, nope, have not. Now I'm going down to John C. Campbell at the end of the week, and I'm going to take a course. Maybe I can learn how to turn. But uh, <laughs> <coughs> but uh. It's a vacation, being with a couple friends, and going to play around with an airbrush a little bit. So if you see me come in with a uh, coat pelly across my forehead or something, you know. Your glasses will be spotted. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of odd. After 20 years of teaching down there, I'm going down to take a class. So. It'll be my second one that I've taken down there. The first one was barbecuing, smoking. <laughs> Anybody have anything else they're interested or want to know? Thank you. <laughs>